Hi, everyone, and welcome to Book Break and Happy New Year. I am with my fellow librarian, Stephanie, and we are here to tell you about the books that we're looking forward to reading in 2024 and also give you a rundown of some of the heavy hitters that are being published. So just when you thought your to-be-read list couldn't get any longer, <laughs> yep. Stephanie and I are here to add to the pile. So mine is just getting outrageous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For I ne- sure. I never realized till we were researching this, like how many more books I'm going to want to read. Yeah. A lot of big ones coming out. Yeah. So I will get started. The first one that I'm looking forward to is coming out in February of 2024, and it's called The Book of Doors by Gareth Brown. And this one is a debut novel, which I always, I think you like debuts mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Um, it's magic, adventure, romance, and they kind of compare it as a read alike for either The Midnight Library, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, or The Night Circus, okay. so which I really everything. liked the last uh-huh. two. Um, so the, the basic premise is Cassie Andrews is working in a New York City bookshop, and She's loving her ordinary life until one day one of her favorite customers, an old gentleman, dies right in front of her, and she's devastated. Mm -hmm. But um, she has nothing to remember him by except the last book he was reading, and it's not an ordinary book. It's called The Book of Doors. So that one just grabbed me with the bookshop premise and a reluctant hero, fantasy, and mysterious libraries. Yes, please, to all of the above. Yeah, that sounds so, good, because yeah. it's got a little bit of everything. So, yeah, definitely yeah. worth a try. So what's your first one, Steph? So my first one is also bookish. Um, it's called Love at First Book by Jen McKinley. She's she's pretty popular. Um so I, I don't th- I don't even think I've actually read her, but I've you know I've seen a ton of her books. Um, this one is coming out in May. Um, like I said, it's a bookish book, so I'm always drawn to those. Um, and this one is about a librarian. So anytime I see a book with a librarian, I, I'll pretty much read it. Oh yeah. Um, and so the premise is that she gets a job in Ireland working with her favorite author. I think she was like helping her write her book or something. She, the next book was coming out and she was going to help her write it. I would like to get a job like that. On oh the yeah. Side. I don't know how she got that. <laughs> um, but anyway, so the author has a grouchy son and he runs her bookstore. So then the librarian, um, obviously it's going to be a romance story involved in there. And it's, um, have you heard this? I've, I've been hearing this a ton recently, the grumpy sunshine trope in romance. Yeah. Um, where it's like somebody's like bubbly and energetic and then the other person's just a grump. And it's, it's cute. There's a ton of books coming out within that little subgenre. I like that. Um, so like yeah, that. I thought that sounded cute, especially because, you know, she's a librarian and there's an author and there's a bookstore. It's kind of like the first one you mentioned. It's just like, Hitting all the right notes for that one. I know. And I think you and I both really like books about yep. books. Oh, yeah. So Yeah, that'll be a good one. That will be a good yep. one. Now I've got to add that one to yeah. my list. Oh, I know. All right. So my next one is called Sleeping Giants by Renee Denfeld. If you remember, she was one of our Rochester Reads authors. And hers are a little bit darker. Um, the Child Finder and I believe The Enchanted was the Rochester Reads. But this one also has similar themes about foster children, Um, secrets, and the power of love to right even the most agrarious wrongs. I probably said that word wrong. Um, (laughs) But it's about a missing boy that is swept away from an Oregon beach. Um, Another thing that grabbed me in the description was uh, the sister cares for a polar bear at the local zoo, and I love like any kind of animal thing. And this one is coming out in March of 2024. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I thought her writing was just, even though her subjects are dark, Mm -hmm. her writing is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, that sounds good. I like stories about like disappearances and stuff. So yeah, I'll probably add that to my list too. Oh yeah. polar bear thing's kind of cool. That's unique. I know. Yeah, I like that. I know. I like that. All right. Well, switching gears a little bit, Claire knows I'm all about the horror stuff. Um, So the next one I wanted to mention was called Horror Movie Bought by Paul Tremblay. Um, It's coming out in June. He's become fairly popular, kind of in the horror in the horror genre. Um, he wrote that one, um, Cabin at the End of the World. Oh, okay. Um, so this one is about a horror movie. I guess it's a cursed film. Um, it takes place in 1993. There was a group of filmmakers. They were making a movie called Horror Movie, um, but something happened on set. Don't know what. Um, but only three scenes 
and clips were ever released of the movie. So it's got kind of like this cult following. Right. Um, and so now it's 30 years later and there's going to be a Hollywood reboot of the movie. Um, one cast member survived apparently, and he gets involved in the reboot. Um, and he's really mm -hmm. determined to get the movie out. I, I, you know, I guess there's secrets, tragedy, all kinds of stuff that happened during the filming. Um, so yeah, that just sounded just creepy in general. Um, and I know he's a good writer, so I definitely have that one at the top of my list, I would say for June. It's yeah, that yeah. one sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are with you on the horror thing. Yeah. They really like It's their becoming horror. more popular, I think. Yeah. My next one is murder, so not quite horror, okay. but, you know, I love a good murder. Yeah. Um, and this one is called How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. It's a good and, title. Yeah. yeah and this one intriguing. is compared to <laughs> Knives Out and the Thursday Murder Club. Oh, cool. So if you like, you know, either that movie or that series, which I do, um, it might be a good pick for you. It's about a woman who spends her entire life trying to prevent her foretold murder, and people don't believe her, uh -huh. and she's proven right like 60 years later when she is found dead in oh, her geez. sprawling country estate. So now it's up to her great niece, of okay. course, who's probably going to inherit this you know, big mm -hmm. place to find the killer. So I love like that English countryside mm -hmm. setting. There's something about a yeah. mystery set in England yeah. that draws me in yeah and this one is coming out in march okay. of 2024 yeah that so. sounds interesting yeah i think i think it sounds fun mm -hmm. it does <laughs> all right so i i have another um that like that title of that book was just super intriguing this one is too it's called home is where the bodies are oh um and that one is by geneva rose she kind of blew up this year she was the one that did the perfect marriage okay she might have been like a TikTok, a yeah book talk um, but I know that book just blew up. Um, so this one's coming out in April. It's about three estranged siblings who um, reunite at their mother's estate after she passes away. Um, I guess the siblings decide they're going to watch these old home movies, just kind of reminisce about the past. Um, but one of the videos shows their father, and he is covered in blood, and there is a dead body. And the end of the video, they show the parents, I believe, making a pack saying they are going to get rid of the body, and then the video cuts. <laughs> wow. Um, so it's kind of a lot to take in. I'm like, okay, trying to envision this. Uh, it just sounds crazy. Like, this just nuts. Why did they save the tape? What did they tape? Why did they tape it? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely probably going to grab that book, like, as soon as I see it. Cause oh, I'm just like, that I gotta, one is yeah. going to blow up. Yeah. You know it. Yeah, so yeah. we got to see what that one's about for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. My next one, I'm changing gears entirely. Right. I'm going right. into a memoir. And this one is called Slow Noodles, a Cambodian memoir of love, loss, and family recipes by, oh, I'm hoping I'm going to say this, Chantha Nujan. So this one is, I would say, if you liked the one, oh, gosh, the lady from Japanese Breakfast, Crying in H Mart. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm hoping that this is kind of like that. So... Um, it's a lot of finding hope and reclaiming the recipes because they were Cambodian ref refugees who lost their country and their family during Pol Pot's genocide in the 1970s. Oh, wow. So um, with over 20 Keimer recipes included, slow neuters will resonate with uh, people that liked, you know, the crying in H Mart. I think this one is going to be a little bit more harsh just because yeah. of the whole refugee yep. si situation but um she also it seems to be very hopeful because she has hopes yeah. for a new life so this one's coming out in february and i'm kind of curious about it so yeah the food memoirs are kind of getting popular too yeah so that's cool yeah. it's got the recipes and everything that's cool yeah it sounds like it'll be interesting yeah so that one that one's on my list yeah uh, all right. My next one is called Cold to the Touch by Carrie Hakoda. This one comes out in April. It's another debut author. Um, this one takes place in Alaska. Every time I do a book break with you, I seem to have books in Alaska. So yes. I, I don't know. It's like a popular setting, um, but I love it. Like Alaska is like my bucket list place that I want to travel to. So I love all these um, Alaskan books. Um, but yeah, so this one, just kind of a general premise. It's a serial killer targeting women in Alaska. Um, I saw that it was recommended for fans of Harlan Coben, Lisa Gardner, and for true crime junkies. Um, I love true crime. Those are great authors. So as soon as I saw those comparisons, I was like, I'm just going to add it right to my list. Oh, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. 
I also I read that one that you recommended last the, oh, year. Oh yeah, the one in Alaska. The one about the, yes. the Alaska where they all got yep. shut into that little town. Yes. And that was good. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I'm I'm on a mystery kick too. Okay. So this is Mrs. Quinn's Rise to Fame by Olivia Ford. So this one isn't really a mystery, but it's another British thing. Okay. I, I think maybe Britain is my. Th- unofficial yeah, theme like this it. year yeah, yeah. but um this one it's an older woman and she decides to compete in a british baking show oh that's all to you. Get, <laughs> yeah oh definitely to get new independence um but of course she's going to confront long ago held secrets and she's going to get fame but it's supposed to be like light-hearted a redemptive coming of old age you know love story and an ode to good food so yes this yeah. has me yeah. written all over it yeah it and good. um i don't have to wait too long for this one because it's coming out at the end of january oh, okay so yeah that sounds cute yeah they had me at british Bake. yeah the show. oh yeah yeah that'll be fun <laughs> i love it um so my next one is called miss morgan's book brigade brigade by janet skeslian charles Hopefully I didn't mess that name up. Um, so that one is coming out in April. This is a dual timeline, which we've talked a lot about those mm-hmm. kinds of books. I like them. I do um, too. And it's based on a true story about an American librarian named Jessie Carson. I had never heard of her. Um, but apparently this woman, um, she takes a leave of absence in 1918 from her job at New York Public Library to help rebuild in France. Um, while she was there, she established the first ever children's libraries in France, and then she suddenly disappeared. True story. Oh, wow. I Googled this. I could find next to nothing about it. I saw, just like she was mentioned a couple times, there wasn't much about it. Um, so that 1918, that's what? End of First War yeah. War, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but then I mentioned it was a dual timeline. So then the second timeline is in 1987. So this part was made up. It was, Jesse Carson was real. But this part, um, in 1987, there's a new librarian working at New York Public Library. She stumbles upon the story of Jesse Carson and then becomes obsessed with it. She wanted to find out what happened to her. Um, so, yeah, curious, just like me, I guess. Um, yeah. So that's kind of why I added this book to my list, just because in general I'm fascinated by like disappearances and missing people stories, and this one is true. So like I said, I couldn't find much about it, so I'm hoping the author, I'm assuming, has more information. Um, so I kind of want to see how the book ends and oh, see, definitely, if, see yeah. if they ever found her. If anybody has ever heard of her, please let us know if you yeah. know anything about the story, because I did not. That kind of reminds me of like a Fiona Davis book yeah. where it's got yep. that kind of older and then Mm -hmm. new story so my next one actually is a a little bit of a dual timeline too but this one was pure fantasy and i actually i've I've read this one i have to you know say i got this on net galley but i really loved it it's called the fox wife by yang zi chu and this comes out in february and it's a fantasy set in china in manchuria in 1908 um A young woman is found frozen to death in the snow, and her death is clouded by rumors of foxes being involved, which in in this old folklore, foxes actually turn into people, and they're very beautiful or handsome, depending Mm -hmm. on if they're male or female, so they can kind of trickster, Mm -hmm. you you know, you. So um, people are wondering who this dead woman is, what happened to her, and there's a detective, or he's not a detective, he's a private investigator, and he has a history, like supposedly when he was young, he was very sick, and he was healed by the fox god. Oh, wow. So he's very interested when anybody says the word fox, like he's in. Um, Meanwhile, there's a family that owns a Chinese medicine shop and they have a curse where the oldest son will die before their 24th birthday so i believe the son is 23 so they're really starting to panic so the grandmother finds this maid and she's kind of mysterious and some people are wondering if she's a fox and of course Hmm. these two stories are gonna yeah intertwine okay um but i don't want to give too much away but if you like kind of fantasy folklore this is almost like a fairy tale retelling yeah it sounds Um, interesting it it really was it was really good yeah that definitely sounds cool um all right so this one's a little bit different from what we've been talking about it's kind of a romance um called Happily Never After by Lynn Painter, and it's coming out in March. Um, So this one's about a a woman named Sophie. Um, She just found out that her fiancé is cheating, but instead of canceling the wedding herself, she hires um, a guy named Max, who is a professional wedding objector, Hmm. uh, to call off the wedding. 
Um, wedding objector. Yeah, I've never heard of that. that. <laughs> it reminded me of Wedding Crashers, which classic. It's yeah. a funny movie. Um, so anyways, yeah, so she has this guy call off her wedding, and now, of course, she's cynical about love like he is um, since she had to, you know, call off her wedding. So she decides, you know, I want in. I want to do this. I want to be at a wedding obje- objector too. <laughs> so apparently they're working as wedding objectors together, and then, I, you know, it's a romance, so you can kind of guess where that goes. Of course they're going to fall in love. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a rom-com. I love those. You kind of need one of these after you read some of these creepy books. You know, you need that palate cleanser. So, yes. yeah, I yeah. was like, I got to check this one out for oh, sure. Oh, that sounds, sounds really fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right, the next one I'm going uh, into a kind of a mystery but this one sounds kind of funny to me, and it's called The Fellowship of Puzzle Makers by Samuel Burr, and it comes out in April. And the way this character is described, his name is Clayton Stumper, and he was <laughs> abandoned at birth, and this woman that is a crossword cult puzzle compiler takes him in. That reminds me of Harry Potter for some reason. Yes. So he's 26 years old. He dresses like your grandpa and drinks uh-huh. sherry like your aunt. So I, I can just hear, what's that um, thrift shop rap playing? Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> this guy. Um, but anyway, so the aunt that raises him dies, and now she bestows upon him a final puzzle and a promise is to reveal the mystery of his parentage and also prepare him for life beyond the walls of, you know, their little, like, puzzle commune or whatever. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. so I thought it just sounded yeah. really quirky and yeah. fun. Hopefully mm-hmm. it won't be, you know, stupid quirky, but it'll yeah. be fun quirky. I think it'll be fun, yeah, it yeah. sounds cool. Awesome. I just had to laugh the way they described him. Yeah. Dresses like your grandpa. Yeah. So. Um, all right, so the next one I'm going to talk about, I wanted to include a nonfiction one on here. So the one I picked for that is Everest, Inc., The Renegades and Rogues Who Built an Industry at the Top of the World, and it's by Will Cockrell. It comes out in April. Um, so I'm the least athletic person in the world, and I don't enjoy hiking, but for some reason I love Mount Everest. Uh-huh. Um, there was a show about people, I think it was just called Everest, that would – trek up Mount Everest. So I was obsessed with that show. So now I love reading about it. Um, And what this book is about in particular is about um, the Himalayan guiding industries, the Sherpas. Oh, interesting. So most people, you know, they have to hire somebody to take them up Mount Everest. Um, It's said that 90% of all climbs on Mount Everest are now guided. Um, So yeah, this story is just about that industry, about the Sherpas and the people who do the um, guided tours up Mount Everest. Um, it seems like it was pretty in-depth research. He interviewed Sherpas. He interviewed climbers. Um, but, yeah, so this is supposed to be good for uh, armchair mountaineers is what I read. And that's what I would consider myself because I would never climb a mountain. Um, but I will definitely read about it. Um, oh, that sounds yeah. like right up my alley. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So those are what Stephanie and I want to read, mm-hmm. but we have some heavy hitters because, of course, we have to tell you about those a little bit. And the first one I'm going to mention is... Here's my romance, Funny Story by Emily Henry, oh, and yeah. that's coming out in April. And this is kind of about, it's it's like a, a not for lack of a better word, like a partner swap, you know, fake romance okay. trope. Yep. So Daphne moves to her fiancé's lakeside hometown in Michigan only to be dumped for his childhood mm-hmm. love. So she's a, a children's librarian. So that's another reason why I've oh, got to okay. read this. Yep. Yep. Um, and of course, you know, doesn't make any money mm-hmm. <laughs> and she needs a roommate. So okay. who else would she find? But her, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, but her, her ex fiance's fiance's okay. ex. Okay. Okay. So yeah, they've a kind of swapped. Yep. And okay. of course, you know, love and hijinks ensue, yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah, Emily Hendry's a big big one. We'll probably get a ton of copies of those in. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure she's she's gotten to a point where she's you know really popular. Oh yeah, and the yeah. main character is a librarian. So what yeah, else do we need exactly, to know? Exactly. Yeah, we'll yeah. be reading that. <laughs> um, so uh, the first heavy hitter that I was going to mention, um, the familiar by Lee Bardugo, that comes out in April. Um, I am not personally a fantasy reader, first of all, but I do want to kind of get into it. So if anybody has any suggestions for beginner fantasy readers, let me know. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention this because she's huge. Um, it's in a, it's a historical fantasy. 
Um, and I know a lot of people are waiting for it to come out. Have you read Lee Bardugo before? You know what? She, didn't she write Shadow and Bone and everything? Yeah. I think I, I'm not sure if I have or not, but she okay. is, she started out in teen yes. and I think she's moved yep. over. She's doing adult now. Yeah. Yeah. I think Ninth House might've been her adult one. I, th- yeah, I like think a, that was her first a dark adult. academia yeah. and I know it's popular. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. oh, cool. So the other one that I have as a heavy hitter is this is like the grand dame of historical fiction is Kristen Hanna. Okay, yep. You know, this one comes out in February and it is set in the Vietnam War. So, of course, we know her as the author of The Nightingale, but um, yeah, I'm sure that one is another one that people will be lining up to read. Yeah, definitely. Um, The next one I wanted to mention is Bride by Ailey Hazelwood, which comes out in February. She is another romance author that just kind of blew up over the last year or two. She wrote the the love hypothesis, right? Like um, she yep. has a lot of like it was like STEM romance, yep. which is yep. yep. All of her rom coms take place in the STEM field and deal with women working in STEM, which is awesome. Um, this one though, I wanted to mention because it's completely different from her normal ones. This is a paranormal romance about a vampire and a werewolf. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that for you know her fans. I know wow. she's pretty po- popular now. It's kind of cool when they switch gears, and yeah. I'm curious to see how she does you know with paranormal romance. So. That's that's really interesting. Yeah. All right, I've got one that is um, a continuation in a series in Tana French. She's like a mm-hmm. big mystery. Yep author this comes out in march it's called the hunter and if you read the searcher which is um her series where she has a detective from chicago that moves to ireland this one is a continuation in that series so um now he's trying to build a life he has a kind of a love interest i think and the kid that he sort of finds and mentors at the end something happens i think her father comes back so you know, okay. that's going to lead to some some troubles. But, um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will want to read that one, too. Yeah, she's big. Um, the next one I had to mention was Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth, which comes out in April. She's another one. She's just, like, blown up over the right. last two years. Um, I like her. I, I do like her. She writes really good thrillers. Um, most recently I read The Soulmate. I added that to the staff picks. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one, you know, kind of goes along with all her other ones. Um just an interesting thriller. I guess this one, they uh, discover bones buried underneath the house. That's just kind of like the one line summary. So that sounds interesting. I'll definitely read that one. Yeah. And there, uh, one thing I like about thrillers is they're usually pretty fast. Oh, read. yeah, for yeah. sure. Yep. All right. So I've got um, The Gunkle Abroad. Mm-hmm. So for a lot of people that read The Gunkle, mm-hmm. this one is the sequel, comes out in May. Um, I don't know too much about it, but I believe he's like the cover was in a gondola so i'm oh, thinking okay. he's taking the nephew or niece yeah. or whatever to oh, rome be cute. Yeah, yeah so i just love the title too it's just fun yeah yeah um oh i was gonna mention i have no idea how to say his name but it's the fury by alex michael Ides. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. That's the one that... Oh. Yep, he wrote The Silent, Silent Patient. Silent Patient, yeah. So, yeah, that book was huge. So, um, this one's coming out in January, and I guess it is a about a group of famous friends whose island trip gets upended by murder. So, I'm definitely reading that. I think you probably will, too, oh, based yeah. on the description. Mm-hmm. I think my last one is called... Um, it's Eric Larson, who is a okay. big nonfiction yep. person. He wrote The Devil in the White City, and this is called The Demon of Unrest, and it comes out in April 2024. 20, okay. um, I'm really interested in this one because it's about the Civil War time. So it's the five months between the election of Abraham Lincoln and the start of the Civil War. So what divided our country? You know, it's based on diaries, secret communication, Um, communication, slave ledgers, plantation records. So Larson is going to give us a political horror story that captures the forces that led America to the brink. And it's a dark reminder that we don't often see a cataclysm coming until it's too late. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, My final one is also uh, nonfiction. It's called Knife by Salman Rushdie. Um, I'm sure a lot of you remember he was attacked recently on stage at a speech. Um, So the subtitle of this one, I believe, was um, 
meditations after an attempted murder. Sean's nice. just double checking for us. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is um he is an author and this one is going to be about that uh attempted murder. So I'm Which definitely... was right here in New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a crazy one. It was so Chautauqua Institute, right? Yes, I believe yeah. so. Jamestown. Oh. Yeah. Very close to my alma mater. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think all three of us probably. So, are you going to read that one, Sean? I think I might because I I really liked um, you know the the, what's the one that got him in big trouble? Uh, Can't remember the title right now. Oh, Satanic Verses. Satanic Verses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm always into a a controversial and sort of polemic read. Yeah. Controversy is. Yeah. It's you gotta you gotta get involved. (laughs) Right. So, we have a lot of picks here for you, and hopefully something that we read will be appealing, um, but we would love to know what you would like to read in 2024, which yep. one of our picks most resonates with you, and um, we hope that you have a great new year, find lots of things to read, and also in January, I will be meeting with Rebecca, another librarian here, and just kind of going over a list of what we've been reading lately, so... Thanks for listening to Book Break, and we will see you next time. Thanks, Stephanie, for joining us. Book Break is a production of the Greece Public Library, made possible through the support of the friends of the Greece Public Library. Theme music composed and performed 